There's no doubt about it, Arsenal have a massive game against Porto in the Champions League tonight. Arsenal need to come back from their 1-0 deficit in order to win to reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And while arguably this could be the biggest game of the season so far, the big games keep continuing for the Gunners. But will Arsenal's European struggles continue? Let's get into it. Now this game is massive for the future of Arsenal because in order for Arsenal to show that the project has been working, they sort of need to get past at least Porto in the Champions League and show a bit of elevation innovation and improvement there as well as we have seen in the league. We all know Mikel Arteta is a brilliant manager and he can really tactically outplay anyone on his day in England but it's definitely a different ball game in Europe. Not necessarily better tactics but they play a lot differently and teams are a lot more confident than you would see teams in the Premier League especially teams that would be hard to break down. And for an instance let's go to the game at the weekend. Arsenal struggled to break down a stubborn Brentford side and eventually they did really well and got the winner because Brentford sort of lacked the legs to keep pressing and be very intense in that game. Now I'm not someone that necessarily looks at that like a bad thing. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that Arsenal aren't thrashing every single team. You can't possibly do that every week especially against top oppositions even where Brentford are in the league it doesn't really matter. And I guess it is always down to perspective as well. Everyone always says if you score last minute winners if you don't play particularly well and still get the win that is champions mentality. And while a lot of champions a lot of teams have obviously got results when they've not necessarily played well when you played well it, you'd probably prefer that and Arsenal have been the last few weeks and just because there's one game against Brentford doesn't mean they've dropped off I still expect them to be at an amazing level and it's just one of them games where the team comes to the Emirates and they defend really well and they're very much running everywhere I thought Brentford were excellent in defence and they really did push Arsenal into positions they didn't want to be in but none of that matters when Arsenal get the result at the end of the day and there's loads of different tactics and systems that Arsenal are using in order to get the ball in good positions I mean we even Declan Rice has had a much more elevated role since Jorginho has come in and you've seen a better output from him suddenly obviously getting a lot of assists from corners and set pieces but now he's scored two in the last two games and speaking of goals Havertz has really stepped up scoring in his last four games now and having two assists now he is still going to miss chances even against Brentford he missed a few and was a bit wasteful in the first half but eventually he turned up where we needed it to and scored the goal that mattered and that gets me on to the point where I think Havertz and Jorginho are going to be the key for Arsenal against Porto tonight Jorginho did not start in the first leg we saw a play Trossard which definitely surprised me. I did my preview and expected Jorginho to start that game. Trossard often came into midfield I think to try and help Arsenal over man and over press that midfield for Porto but because Porto were also quite compact in themselves and had a lot of intensity in their three centre mids were very very good. It really struggled for any one of our team to get on the ball and in the end we were a bit stagnant on the ball and we kind of just passed the ball out to the wings and Porto forced us into a direct playing style that we didn't really want to do. We wanted to play it around and work it a bit more like we usually do and I think Porter will probably revert to sort of the same system where they try and close us down a lot in the midfield keep their team very narrow having a bit of a high line making sure that we're forced to basically go down the wing with the ball deeper and someone like Jorginho can change this up a little bit it can make Arsenal have a bit more sustained possession with Declan Rice obviously being a bit more of a roamer going forward trying to win the ball back pressing higher it also means someone like Jorginho can do them deep passes through over the defence if they are going to play a high line this could be very important important and it allows Arsenal to actually play that direct style that Porto is sort of forcing us into playing. I also think someone like Kai Havertz running through could be very vital to the team. I think him over the top is going to be a massive part of this game and he has to start up front in my opinion. He has to stay on the last defender because Porto in the first leg gave many opportunities where he was on that last defender waiting for that ball over the top and it didn't work a lot of the times but I think at the Emirates it could work a lot more. And eventually this frees up space in other positions. If they try and adapt to that this will eventually get maybe Odegaard a bit more on the ball or maybe Saka down the right and although this is not exactly a certified way of winning I think it would be a much bigger improvement than the first game we played against them and not even just tactically surely mentally that the team are going to be much more encouraged in this game we're going to have the fiery Emirates crowd hopefully around them if they sort the ballot system out it's going to be one of the biggest Arsenal nights in a very long time at the Emirates especially in the Champions League and we've seen Arsenal blow teams away at the Champions League the intensity they had against Newcastle and Liverpool was so much that they couldn't even deal with it if we can create that, I think Porto will be rushed into making mistakes. And while they definitely had the advantage at home with their fiery crowd themselves and their intensity that they had, it's going to be very much different and probably switched around, which definitely gives Arsenal a lot bigger of advantage. And although we didn't have any shots on target in the first leg, the fact they have won eight Premier League games in a row is surely a lot of encouragement. And obviously, we haven't got a Premier League game for a few weeks. We don't have one next weekend, and then it's international breaks. So we don't have one the week after. So with a long outbreak after this, I think Arsenal really 
really need to focus, give it all their all in this game, and they definitely can do with the situation at hand. Now, of course, Arsenal have a slight injury issues. Now, I expect Fabio Vieira hopefully to be back on the bench and Zinchenko because we saw Zinchenko on the weekend come on with also Thomas Partey being on the bench the last few games, maybe being on the bench as well. But the big one is that I don't think Gabriel Martinelli is going to be in a position to start. He should be okay for the Manchester City game when we come back in a few weeks' time, which is the main thing. But obviously, it's a big loss that he's not going to be there because he is a very electric and explosive player and he can be very effective in these Champions League games especially. But I would expect or want to play someone like Gabriel Jesus out on that left. Now, it's not exactly tried and trusted there, but his brilliant dribbling ability and the fact he can interchange with Kai Havertz, which they have had a bit of a good relationship in the Champions League, could work better. If we cross the ball in, they can both be in there helping each other. While Havertz also in the first leg against Porto often kept drifting out to the left anyway and Martinelli kept coming in. We can still do this with Gabriel Jesus and if anything, that suits him a bit more so we could also switch them around quite a lot. Obviously, the pace is going to be an issue. Gabriel Jesus isn't exactly a quick player, but I think because of the intensity, we could potentially push these teams in, hopefully. And all Gabriel Jesus needs to do is press really well with Havertz and Odegaard at the start of the game to win the ball back. And hopefully, Gabriel Jesus doesn't take too long on the ball in this game and he can usually do his great dribbling skills to get past people, but actually be decisive in the decisions he makes. Because I actually trust Havertz a lot more in that position, in the striker position right now. But just like we did against Manchester City and Liverpool this season, we need to feed off the crowd and make sure that they push us through the game. We've got brilliant abilities and we should have enough to beat Porto anyway. Our corner tactics are better, our heading's better, our physicality's better and our goal scoring is better while also our defending should be better. Now that's not a disservice to Porto, they're a very good side and obviously European football's a lot different but on player to player pl paper we should be doing a lot better and I expect a hopefully a better performance. And obviously if Arsenal lose, Arsenal don't go through, it's not necessarily the end of the world because obviously they are still in this league title race which is obviously going to probably go down to the wire and Arsenal have got massive games in that still to come up. But I think it's more about the principle of Arsenal fans wanting to get into the Champions League after all these years, us never really doing anything before and now finally we've got a team that can definitely compete at the highest level and going out in the first knockout round to Porto after having a really good group stage would be a big disappointment and it would definitely remind us of the times we had before. But I expect us at least to keep a cooler head in this game and I think that might be the key in the end. As long as we can get an early goal, we're definitely in this tie and we could definitely push through and score a few goals against them. I still expect Porto probably to have a big threat on the attack because they are a very good attack inside. And since we last played them, they have thrashed their rivals 5-0. So they clearly are a very good team and good form. And they will have a day's rest more than us because they played on Friday other than us playing on Saturday. But I just hope for Arsenal win and hope we can get the performance done that I know we can. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about the Arsenal Porto game and let me know what you think is going to happen or who do you think could be a key player for Arsenal. If you like this video, please watch my video yesterday where I talk about how good Arsenal's defence has been and why it's so good. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.